Welcome back, everyone. I'm Kaya Carrington Russell, best selling Australian author of Kick Ass Heroines and Action Packed Fantasy Romance. And I have a very special guest for you today. We are talking New York Times, we are talking USA Today best selling author, and Goodreads Award nominee as well, which is an amazing feat. With over 40 books written of action packed fantasy, we are talking to the one and only Jennifer Estep. How are you today? I'm good. Thank you so much for having me. I really appreciate it. Absolutely. I am so excited and honored to have you on here because you have accomplished so many things and your books are so, the only way I can say it is kick ass. So (laughs) I want to know what started your writing journey and how you found your entry level into the publishing world. Um, well, I think like a lot of authors, you know, my mom took me to the, our local library every week when I was a kid. And that's kind of how I fell in love with books and reading in the first place. Um, and then as I got older, you know, I started thinking about, I want to try to write a book one day. Um, and I wrote my first book. It was a very, very bad epic fantasy book. Um, one summer during college, uh, that book will never see the light of day, but that kind of, you know, I was bitten by the writing bug and I wrote another book and another book and another book. And then it took me about um, about seven years. I wrote seven books over the course of about seven years um, before I finally got an agent and I sold my seventh book. And that book was Karma Girl, which is the first book in my big time superhero um, paranormal romance series. Wow. And so in that seven years, were you pitching to agents during that time and just continued writing? <clears throat> oh yeah. I mean, I would finish one book and pitch that book and then start writing another book. I mean, it was like a continual process for me. Yeah. And, you know, that was like back in the like mid to late two thousands where it was almost a little bit before email and you could, you know, pitch online and do all that stuff. Uh, so I remember going to the library and getting like the publisher's marketplace and like actually sending out, you know, real letters to a lot of the agents and I I would get real letters back in the mail. So I think I got about um, probably about four or 500 rejection letters altogether um, before I finally sold my first book. So what then encouraged you to keep going? Because I know it can be so disheartening, Mm -hmm. especially to that's a long period to some to wait. Whereas now if you pitch to an agent, you usually hear back within like three months, so to speak. So what made you want to keep going and that you believed in yourself? I just, I loved books. I have, I've always loved books and reading and um, I knew that was what that I wanted to do. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, and also while I was pitching, um, I was working in a daily newspaper. Um, I have a degree in journalism. So, you know, I was I was kind of writing for my day job and then writing the books at night. Um, But I knew that, you know, writing the books was where my heart really was. Um, And I just I kept going. And, um, you know, along the way, I could tell that, like, I was getting closer because the rejection letters kept getting, you know, like better. Um, (laughs) If a rejection letter can ever be better. Um, But, you know, instead of like a form letter, I would get like a little note that says, you know, I really like this, but it's not quite right for me. Or, you know, I just bought a book just like this or, you know, little things like that. Um, And then I started getting requests for, you know, chapters and full manuscripts and things like that. So I could I could tell that I was getting closer and that kind of gave me the, uh, you know, the the desire to keep going. The encouragement. How did you find then working, doing journalism? Because journalism is a very different kind of writing to then creative writing as well. Did you ever find that it balanced each other out, being able to do that of a nighttime, the creative aspect, and then journalism during the day? Or did you find the creative writing you had to really sort of adapt to? Um, I actually, I worked for many years in the features department of the newspaper. So, you know, I would write stories about other authors or artists or, you know, more, more fun things than, you know, what we would consider to be hard news. Um, So I had a little more leeway to be creative rather than if you were writing a story about, you know, somebody whose, um, you know, car was broken into or something like that. Um, And the good thing about you know, working at the newspaper was sometimes I would have 15 or 20 minutes to write a story on deadline. So it really told me how to kind of write quickly, which, you know, comes in handy in the book business. And then after you, you got your agent, how long was the publishing process? Was it what you expected? 
Um, in some ways it was, and then in some ways that it wasn't. I don't remember exactly how long it took us to sell um, my first book. I want to say that we got an offer for it after a couple of months, and then it came out the next year. Um, it did surprise me how long and slow the traditional publishing process is. Um, sometimes even today, it makes me like want to tear my hair out <laughs> because, you know, it just, it takes, everything takes weeks, if not months, and then all that time adds up. And before you know it, you know, it's, um, it's been a year and your book has still hasn't come out yet. So uh, yeah, it was, it was definitely a long process for me. How did family and friends receive all them? I'm a published author now. How, how is that for you? Uh, well, my grandma likes to tell the story like, um, I guess maybe I was like five or six years old and I told her that I was going to, you know, write a book someday and get it published. And I think she was like a lot of grandparents like, oh, that's nice, dear, you know, um, but eventually I did it. And yeah, my friends and family have been really, really supportive. That's amazing. One book that really grabbed my eye and because it's just right up my alley to read, Kill the Queen. That cover is amazing. And do you have it? I do. I have it right here. <laughs> I came prepared. It's such a beautiful cover. I love it so much. Can you can you tell us a little bit about that series and mm. what gave you the inspiration for it? Um, well, I always loved epic fantasy. You know, I read Lord of the Rings and The Hobbit and all that kind of stuff back in high school. And I tried for a long time to write epic fantasy. The first couple of books that I wrote were epic fantasy, but it just, um, I don't think I had enough experience as a writer to really pull it off back then. Um, and a couple of years ago, um, I was talking to my agent and I'm like, you know, what kind of a fantasy series should I try to write next? You know, what about epic fantasy? Because this was when, you know, game, when Game of Thrones was like really, really popular. And I thought, you know, what if I wrote something like that? Um, and so I decided to take another stab at epic fantasy. And um, when I was writing Kill the Queen, you know, as I've gotten older and more experienced as a writer, I try to think about the things that I do well as a writer and try to like incorporate those into whatever book or world that I'm building. So for Kill the Queen, I thought um, you had mentioned before that, you know, my books are full of kickassery, I think is a good term for it. <laughs> and I thought, what kind of a kickass heroine can I write in an epic fantasy book? And, you know, one day the idea of gladiators just popped into my head and I thought, gladiator meets game of thrones with a kick-ass heroine and i thought that is my idea and you know kill the queen in the the crown of shards world just kind of you know um came out of that how do you find writing epic fantasy because it is a little bit more of a challenge to write genre wise because there's so many rules to be put in place and they're usually longer books as well so how do you keep track of everything what is your writing process like uh, my epic fantasy books, they're about 125,000 words. So most of my other books, my urban fantasy books are about 100,000 words. So they are, they're quite a bit longer. So everything takes longer, you know, writing, editing, copy edits, page proofs. Like by the time I finished an epic fantasy book, like I, I never want to look at it again. I'm so sick of reading it and rereading it. Um, <clears throat> I am a total pantser. Um, I do not do very much plotting at all. I, I write in first person. So I think about my heroine and her magic, um, the world building, how she can use her power to defeat the bad guys, uh, what the big turning points of the story are. And then most of the time, you know, I sit down and start writing. Um, sometimes that works out well, and sometimes it doesn't work out so well. <laughs> You wrote a book, actually, um, Write Your Own Cake, I think it was, about offering people world building and character development tips and that. So obviously these are things that you've learned along the way. Um, what would you say then some of the biggest mistakes have been that you find authors fall into, first-time authors, or bad habits maybe that they fall into? Yeah. Um, write Your Own Cake. It's not a book. It's actually just a 2000 word essay. Um, but I wrote it about, you know, some of the things that I thought about when I was writing Kill the Queen and coming up with my epic fantasy world. I think a lot of the first time writers, they see that a certain genre is popular right now. And then they want to write a book in that genre. Like, um, like with Hunger Games, you know, several years ago, that was, you know, like dystopian YA was like the hot genre for for a while. And I think if you don't enjoy reading a genre, you're not going to enjoy writing in that genre. And I think that's 
definitely one mistake that a lot of people make. You know, I always encourage people to have fun with their writing and write the kind of the book that you would want to read, even if it's not, you know, like the hot genre right now. Especially since you've been in this since early 2000s, you would have noticed all the fads go, all the different this is in and then three, four years later it depletes and then it comes back 10 years later. So have you ever tried to sort of write when not necessarily dystopian but when it comes out so to speak or have you always just stayed true to what you felt like you should genuinely write at that time you know I have written book to trends um when I started you know in the early in the late 2000s in the early 2010s you know urban fantasy and paranormal paranormal romance were like the really big hot popular genres and you know like you said they've really kind of fallen by the wayside in recent years So, you know, when I was thinking about Kill the Queen, like I said, that's when Game of Thrones was popular and you were seeing a lot of epic fantasy books, both in young adult and adult. And I thought, you know, that is um, that's a genre and that's a trend that I can write to because I can do, you know, the fight scenes and the world building and all the things that I was already doing in my urban fantasy book. It was just kind of tweaking my skill set for a slightly different genre. Yeah. And I think, too, it's something you have to be a bit more conscious about when you are writing for traditional as well. They obviously need to make sure that it's going to be available on market um, and that's what sort of readers are wanting. So have you ever had proposals and then you've been knocked back because they thought it wouldn't fit at the time? And how have you managed that? Yeah, I mean, I've... I've had all kinds of things happen in my writing career. Um, You know, my first big time superhero series, I wrote three books and then the publisher didn't want any more books because they didn't sell that well. Um, So, yeah, and I've, I've, you know, submitted other books to my agent or even to editors and they're like, you know, we, we don't think this is quite right for us or we're not, we don't publish in that genre or, you know, whatever, whatever the reasoning is, but I've definitely had a lot of setbacks along the way. You know, every, every writer has. Absolutely. And what then made you sort of juggle that? Because I know they, we say it a lot here, but in this industry, we need to grow thick skin. So what was some of the obstacles and what was some of the mentality that helped you achieve that? Well, one thing that has really helped me has been indie publishing, because if a traditional publisher doesn't like a book, but I really like it, I can publish it myself (laughs) and see what happens. And again, sometimes it works out well and sometimes it doesn't, but at least that way, you know. Were you scared to then jump out of traditional a little bit, going hybrid, doing a little bit of indie? What did you find that was different for you? Well, it's definitely more of a risk um, because the author, you know, you're, you have to, you're the one who's financially responsible for everything. You have to pay for the editing and the cover art and the book formatting. And it can be, it can be very expensive to do. Um, And, you know, it's also a risk that you spend all this money. And if the book doesn't sell, then there's kind of no way to recoup, recoup all that time and effort and hard work, not to mention your money. Um, but there are things that I really like about it. You know, I love being able to have control over the cover art, when the book comes out, what price it is. Um, so it's really kind of a balancing act between, you know, the sort of the control that you give up with being uh, traditionally published versus the control that you have when you do indie publishing. And how did you learn how to do this? Because you have to have a business mind as well when you're going into independently published too. So were there some things that you took over from observing in the traditional publishing world or were you Googling everything like a madman and just trying to figure out how to start? Well, you know, it's a little bit of both. I've been, I think I've been indie published since 2011. So it's been quite a while now. Um, and, but I'm always learning something new about cover art or metadata or marketing. Um, one thing about being an author, no matter if you're traditionally published or indie published is, you know, you always have to keep learning and educating yourself, not just about writing, but also like the business side of things, like you said. And yes, I still Google lots of things. I was Googling, I was Googling stuff today about indie publishing. So (laughs) it's kind of, it makes it exciting though, because you're never necessarily an expert in the field. You might know a lot, but there's always so much more to learn and what works for one person doesn't work for other people. So it's really like build your own adventure basically in the indie world, I find. One thing that I find really interesting is 
contract. So we're talking about traditionally publishing and indie publishing. And I think that some people, as soon as they get an agent or they get a traditional publisher, they think this is it. This is the one. This is the only path I can go. Whereas you have had numerous contracts and it just shows that there's flexibility, there's different opportunities. What advice would you have for those who are watching when it comes to um, agents and to traditional publishers and having those numerous contracts? Well, I would always tell people to beware of scams because there are a lot of publishing scams, unfortunately. Uh, You know, always remember that money flows to you from your agent and your publisher. You shouldn't be paying people to to do things like that. Um, And as far as contracts go, read your contracts, read every single word of it, make sure that you understand what it says. If you have a question about it, ask your agent or your editor, what does this phrase mean? You know, I do that with every single contract. Um, you know, even to this day, a lot of the contracts have the same kind of wordage in them, but I'm, I still say like, does this mean what I think that it means? Um, and my agency, they're really great about answering all of my questions, but yeah, before you sign any kind of a contract, Make sure you know what it says, you know the rights that you're giving up, you know what you're getting for them, what you're getting paid, the delivery schedule of your manuscript, um, what happens if something comes up, like if someone gets sick or something and you can't deliver your manuscript, you know, on the the specified date. And yeah, just uh, just make sure that you you understand what you're doing, (laughs) what you're signing before you sign on the dotted line. What advice would you have for those who are pitching? Because pitching is a very intimidating uh, thing, especially for those who haven't yet acquired an agent. So they feel like they're kind of doing the juggling act. Is this phrase right? Is this paragraph correct? What are they after? What would your suggestion in that be? Again, I would just tell people to to have fun with their pitching. You know, it can be really hard to condense, you know, a hundred thousand word book into like a two sentence elevator pitch. Um, So again, think about the kind of things that you like, you know, um, when we were talking about Kill the Queen earlier, you know, my my pitch is, you know, Gladiator meets Game of Thrones with a kick butt heroine. And, you know, think about something like that. You know, what is your book like? Is it, you know, if it's a vampire romance, is it like Vampire Diaries, the TV show, or is it like Twilight or is it like Harry Potter or, you know, whatever it is. And um, for me personally, you know, thinking about, you know, my book is X meets Y, that really helps me kind of hone in and, you know, come up with that elevator pitch because you're not just pitching it to agents. Like whenever I do a book signing and somebody wanders up and they're like, oh, what is your book about? And I'm like, well, it's like Game of Thrones meets Gladiator with a kick about heroin. (laughs) So you will, you'll have to pitch your book a lot and not just to editors and agents, but, you know, people you meet, other authors, bloggers. So yeah, getting, getting good at pitching is definitely um, something that, you know, will, will help you in a lot of ways as an author. What then was your aha moment in your writing career where you thought, I'm an author, this, I'm doing this, I'm where I've always wanted to be. When was that moment? Um, I've had a lot of moments like that, but I think the one that I remember the most vividly is when I got my first finished copy of Karma Girl. Um, and this was back in, I want to say 2007. And I remember I was in my kitchen, I was holding the book, like standing in front of the stove and just thinking, you know, this is it. This is the product of all my hard work and like all the years that I have spent doing this. And it's like, and finally I have the book and the goal and the thing that I have been striving for all along. And you've had so many successes since then as well, which is, again, like I said, when I was uh, stalking you, also stalking you, (laughs) (laughs) I'll just say it for what it is, but it's so impressive, but also it's so inspiring to see this is what a long-term writing career looks like. These are, if you work hard and if you are writing passionately if you're really doing what you love that it's very rewarding and so you know you, you've had USA Today you've had New York Times and you've been on those lists and I'm so curious as to what your biggest accomplishment aside from your aha uh-huh moment what do you feel like your biggest accomplishment has been? Um, you know hitting a list or being nominated for an award that's that's always great um to me personally one of my biggest accomplishments was um being able to support myself with my writing full time 
Um, and, you know, being able to continue to do that because I've been a full-time writer for, I want to say, I guess this will be 12 years this year. Um, and, you know, when I first started out, I thought I'm never going to make any money doing this. <laughs> you know, I'm going to have a day job for the rest of my life. So for me, you know, being able to do what I love full-time, that is one of my biggest accomplishments. And just getting a nice email or a comment from somebody, um, because I try to write books that are fun, you know, action, adventure, magic, romance that just sweep people away on these epic adventures. And whenever I get a comment from someone saying, you know, I was going through a hard time and, you know, your book was a nice escape for a couple of hours. That really means a lot to me. It really, really does. What has been then your most memorable reader interaction moment? Well, yeah. that depends if you want something good or something bad. <laughs> both. I'm curious now, both. I like balance. <laughs> um, again, you know, I go, well, I used to go to a lot of conferences before kind of the world shut down. Um, and, you know, just meeting people in person, you know, people that you might see their screen name online and they come up to a book signing and they tell you how much they love your books. And that's that's always a special um, and then, you know, I, I get some not so nice interactions and then some of them are just like really weird and funny too. I was actually at a conference several years ago and this woman came up to me and she was like, oh, you know, my mom loves your books and she had them all. And she's like, and then I sold them on eBay and, uh, I was like, okay, <laughs> um, I guess you can't keep every book that you get, but yeah. So it's, it's, I mean, and I think a lot of times people say stuff like that and they don't think about how it might make an, somebody else feel, you know, and actually that lady, she emailed me after the conference and apologized <laughs> for saying that. Um, but yeah, I mean, I get, most people are, are really nice, but I do get some comments online and in person that are, that are not so nice. Unfortunately, that is a part of um, the industry and you do have, trolls um unfortunately too and so what was what was the conversation then that you had with yourself to I want to say grow a thicker skin when it comes to reviews because I think it's a hurdle that everyone every author has to overcome to realize this is constructive criticism or this is hurtful um what was the conversation that you had with yourself to overcome that barrier Again, this is something where being a journalist and working in a daily newspaper actually really helps me because um, you would be surprised what people will call you up um, at your job and tell you at eight o'clock on a Monday morning if you've written a story and they don't like it in the newspaper. Um, I had. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, one time this guy called and told me that I needed to take a good English class. Wow. Yeah. I mean, people keep people can be pretty, pretty petty and snarky and mean and cruel so yeah so you know after a while I mean you get so many nasty comments that they kind of just roll off your back a little bit um but it, it's still hard you know um if you're a reviewer or a blogger please do not tag authors in a negative review <laughs> just just don't do it um because an uh, authors are going to see plenty of bad reviews of their book anyway on Amazon or Goodreads or you know just by accident Mm -hmm. um, so I, I don't really understand people tagging authors and negative reviews. Like, what is the author supposed to say? Like, yeah. okay, glad you didn't like my book. Thank you. <laughs> You've made my day. You've made my day. What has been your favorite book to write? You've written over 40 books, which is amazing. So what's the closest one to your heart? That's really hard for me to answer. <laughs> um, I really like a good origin story. So for me, the first book in a series is usually the one that I like the best, just because that's when I do all the world building and things. Um, like I really love Kill the Queen because for me, that was like the culmination of a childhood dream of finally being able to write an epic fantasy book and get it published um, and see it on the shelf, you know, in the fantasy section with, with all the other fantasy authors I had been reading for a long time. Uh, Karma Girl will always be special to me because that was the very first book that I ever had published. Uh, and then my uh, Elemental Assassin Urban Fantasy series, which is one of my most popular series. You know, I had this crazy idea about an assassin who runs a barbecue restaurant um, and Spider's Bite is the first book in that series. And I've written 19 books in that series and I'm going to write some more. So I never thought that would go on that long or 
or like, um, you know, this whole world um, would just come out of this crazy idea that I had. So, so I like different things about all the books. Do you find it challenging having a 19 book series going? Like, how do you remember everything? (laughs) (laughs) Well, I know a lot of authors do series Bibles, um, but I don't do that. I cheat and just use, I do, I cheat. I totally cheat and use the, um, the copy editor notes for all the books. Yeah. Because the copy editor, that's basically what they do. If you're traditionally published or, you know, even if you're indie published, you can hire somebody to do it. They go through your book and they make a list of all the character names and their descriptions and everything. So yeah, I just, I use the copy editor notes and the series Bible to, to kind of cheat and get around that or, if I forget something, I just go look it up. Um, but like I said before, by the time that I'm done with a book, I've read it probably start to finish at least five times. Sometimes it's closer to 10 times. So they're pretty well ingrained in my brain, at least like the books that I've worked on recently. Um, now, some of the other ones, like especially from the early 2010s, I couldn't exactly tell you what goes on, um, but I can I can find the information that I need sooner or later. How do you go with action scenes? Because logistically, you have to figure out if what you're writing makes sense with how they're fighting. So where do you get your inspiration from? Have you Googled weird things on YouTube to figure out how to flip <laughs> somebody? Or Well, actually, um, one of my favorite shows as a kid was The A-Team. Um, I don't know if you've ever seen that in Australia or not. Uh, But that was just a fun action adventure show. And that's always been the kind of TV show and movies and books that I've liked. Um, I like the old Wonder Woman show with Linda Carter, Um, things like Alias and Nikita and Burn Notice, you know, anything that's just fun with a lot of action. And um, I just I kind of see the action scenes like a movie, you know, kind of going in my head. And I think a lot about the magic and the world building and like if the heroine's fighting style um, fits in with that. For example, Evie is a gladiator. So we have a lot of these fight scenes in these like big, huge arenas where a lot of people are watching. So I do try to tailor it to the books. Um, I also do yoga, which has been really helpful in kind of figuring out like how people's bodies can actually move. Like how far can you really bend your elbow back before it snaps? (laughs) And that kind of a thing. And yeah, I, I Google stuff all the time. I mean, you know, every author will tell you that like, we're probably all on a watch list because, um, you know, I've looked up fighting styles and poisons and like, can you kill somebody with, you know, an ink pen and just crazy things like that. So I'm imagining the answer to that was yes. <laughs> <laughs> I think like- it depends on where like you jab the pen in, but yeah, you, you probably could. So who are the authors that um, inspire you or you absolutely love reading? Uh, One of my all-time favorite books is Beauty by Robin McKinley. Um, That's one of the fantasy books, you know, I remember reading um, many, many years ago. Uh, It's just a lovely retelling of Beauty and the Beast. Um, Her writing is just so lovely and lush and elegant. Um, And it's first person, which again is something I really like uh, to read and to write. Um, I have a ton of other favorite books. I love Sugar Daddy by Lisa Kleypas, which is, um, I like that one because it's a coming of age story and a romance all in one. It's about this girl who grows up in Texas and she has to take care of her younger sister. And then she has this wonderful romance, you know, towards the end of the book. I read tons of fantasy authors like, you know, Terry Brooks and J.R.R. Tolkien, uh, David Eddings. I really like uh, the James Bond books by Ian Fleming. Again, something fun with a lot of action and adventure in it. I also really like Donald Westlake. Uh, He does several different series under a variety of names. He does a series, it's called the Dortmunder series, and it's kind of like these really funny Um, comic crime capers about some thieves that have like the worst luck in the world Um, so yeah I read pretty widely across all genres that's awesome and I imagine too that I know there's two different kinds of authors on the fence some say that they can't read other authors because it just they're worried that it's going to influence their writing or that's those who just religiously read because they feel like it just 
reignites that passion and spark and inspiration. So I would say you're that author. <laughs> I will say, you know, when I'm working on a fantasy book, you know, I will often read in another genre like contemporary romance or a mystery or something like that. You know, just because I don't want somebody else's ideas to kind of bleed over into my own. But I, I still pre I still read a lot of fantasy books. <laughs> Well, do you um, write numerous, numerous projects at once or do you just do one at a time? I just work on one thing at a time. Like right now I'm working on copy edits on a science fiction romance that I've written and I hope to indie publish that later this year. And after I finish the copy edits, hopefully this week, um, I will go back and work on a novella in my Elemental Assassin series and then you know I'll switch over and do something else. So I always have multiple projects going. And it's kind of like a cycle of, you know, finish something on one book, go work on something else in another series. Yeah. Kind of like a palette changer, maybe. (laughs) (laughs) I kind of, I kind of feel like I'm on a hamster wheel that just never ends, but okay. (laughs) What has been one of your most left field opportunities? Something that you, you didn't expect to happen or, um, you were approached about a particular opportunity you had your eyes on for so long, but in such a bizarre way. Did you, have you had any of those moments in your career? I have. Um, my young adult books um, and well, my books in general now are very, very popular in Germany, um, which is something that I never expected to happen, but it's been wonderful. I actually got to go to the Frankfurt Book Fair back in 2015 uh, in Germany, and it was just an amazing experience. And that's something, you know, I had never even like entered the realm of possibility of like author dreams in my mind. Mm -hmm. Um, But yeah, it's been so wonderful. And, you know, interacting with all my German fans, um, you know, even to this day, I get so many German Instagram photos of my books and things like that and it's it's been a wonderful surprise how do you find with um emails and that do you go google translate for everything so you can reply (laughs) i do um google translate i can most of the time get the gist of it um and i've had so many comments i know some of the german words now um like some of like the book related german words like revision and things like that or review and um like I love your books and and that kind of a thing. Although, you know, I did share something on my Instagram several months ago and the the German blogger was, I didn't hit Google translate on that one. And the German blogger was like, yeah, I'm really surprised you shared my review. It wasn't that um, positive. And I was like, oh, well, that's, that's what I get from not putting it in Google translate to start with. (laughs) You're like, thank you though. The picture looks lovely. (laughs) Oh, it was a lovely picture. So that was good. When you're then releasing um, independently, traditionally publishing, often you don't have much of a choice as to what's happening in the cover and things like that. But indie, you can do everything and anything. So what are the three must do's for you on every release? I would say uh, to be patient because whether you're indie publishing or traditional publishing, it's going to take a long time. It takes time for you to write the book. It takes time to get it edited, you know, for all the things to happen. So be patient and, uh, you know, give yourself plenty of time. Um, Number two, uh, kind of temper your expectations. Um, When I was first starting out, I thought with my very first book, I thought, oh, this is going to be a huge bestseller and I'm going to get a movie deal and all these wonderful things are going to happen. And no, no, It might happen for some authors, but not for everybody, not for the vast majority of authors. You know, everybody asks about movie deals and things like that. But getting a movie deal is kind of like being struck by lightning. Um, So just kind of, you know, I kind of have to temper my expectations sometimes. Um, And a third thing, you know, just enjoy that the book is finished and that it's finally out there and, you know, for people to read and enjoy, because I do get a lot of nice comments about my books, which which I really appreciate. And it's really satisfying, you know, after like, you know, hunching over my computer for months at a time, it's, it's wonderful that the book is out there and people can read it and we can finally talk about it. So, yeah. So those would be some of my, some of my dues when I have a a new book out. What is one of the biggest celebrations you've had to um, just really appreciate one of the successes that you've had and what, what has it been and what did you do to celebrate? Uh, Well, like I said before, going to the Frankfurt Book Fair was definitely one of the highlights for me. 
Um, it was just, it was a wonderful experience. It was like being a rock star. Uh, it really was. It was, it was fantastic. Uh, I had don't haven't done a lot of like big celebrations for myself at home. You know, whenever I have a new book out, I try to reward myself with something and it doesn't have to be something big. It can be something small, like, you know, a new lipstick or like if a nice dinner out at a restaurant or, you know, a book that I want to read. So just, you know, I find little treats like that work, work well for me. Just making sure that you're acknowledging every success because I, I know that a lot of people, they just are so focused on the next project that they don't take the time to appreciate what they've actually accomplished. So I think I will take your advice. I will buy a new lipstick every book release. I am excited <laughs> for that. What would be your advice for new writers or even those who've been in it for a couple of years because I think there is a sense of wanting to come into the industry and having immediate success and as you said that is very fair what would be your advice to look at it as a long-term career instead of just for now well like I said before for the vast majority of authors you know it is definitely a marathon and not a sprint as the old saying goes um because I didn't really have a lot of success until I think I didn't hit the New York times list until 2012 with like my seventh or eighth book. I'm not sure about the exact numbers. Uh, and you know, that was five years after I was first published. So like I said, it's, I definitely did not happen overnight for me and it can be really, you know, disheartening to put all this work into something and not get the, the success right away. But it's like anything in life, you know, the more that you put into it, the more that you're going to get out of it. And it definitely is a long game. Um, and you just you kind of have to be patient and celebrate the victories that you have along the way and try not to get too down about the disappointments and the bad things that happen. Yeah. And would you say would you contribute some of that to building a writing community around you to having found sort of very simple people who are in the same industry um, where you can talk about the pros and cons sometimes. Have you found that that's really helped you? Definitely. A support system is, I think, a must for every author. Um, you know, your family and your friends are great and they can help you a lot. Um, but having author friends, you know, who know about sometimes you have a crappy cover that you can't do anything about or, you know, something bad happens like your book isn't in a, available online when you want it to be, or it gets pulled down for some reason. And, you know, having, having author friends to, to vent with and commiserate with is, is really important. What, this is my favorite question to ask. What is the goal? What is the big dream that you're chasing for your career? <laughs> you know, I used to say world domination, like <laughs> on the left. Well, Hey, if you're going to, if you're going to have I a goal. Believe, yes. I'm excited. <laughs> I used to say world domination, like, uh, like a, a super villain in a comic book, you know, rule the world kind of a thing. Um, but you know, the more that you think about world domination, you kind of think, does anybody really want to rule the world? I mean, it would just be a giant hassle, like all the time. <laughs> so again, kind of, uh, tempering my expectations. Uh, I just want to continue to write fun books and hopefully grow my fan base and grow my readership. You know, I think it would be great if one of my books was turned into a movie or a TV show. Um, I think it would be really fun to see, you know, the differences between the book and what I have pictured in my head and then what would actually appear on the movie screen. Um, so that's something that I'm hopeful will happen, but if it doesn't happen, you know, I'll be okay. Um, mostly I just want people to think that my books are time and money well spent. And what, what book are we converting into film or TV series? <laughs> well, again, you know, I think Kill the Queen would be great, like on HBO or something like that. And I think my Elemental Assassin series would be really good on Netflix. Um, multiple seasons of that since there are so many books in the series. Yeah. I think so. I, I believe that we can. We can do it. I say we because I'm like, I am on the fan wagon. Let's do it. <laughs> I also have a segment so it's called speed dating with an author so you and I are going to go on a very romantic date I lit a candle I've created ambient <laughs> um, but it's basically five rapid questions are you ready I'm ready all right what's the clumsiest moment you've ever had 
Um, I went up to an author at a book signing and we were talking like a megastar author whose books have been turned into movies and TV shows and whatnot. And um, I was so excited to meet this author. I got them to sign some books for um, me and my dad who reads their books and some other things. And then I walked away and then I remembered I forgot to get a signed book for me. So I had to go back over to this author's table and like ask them for another book. And they probably thought that I was crazy. Um, so yeah, that, uh, that sticks out in my mind as kind of an awkward moment. <laughs> what is your life motto? I don't know that I have a life motto. Um, there are a couple of good mottos. Uh, one that I really like from the James Bond books, the world is not enough. Uh, again, with my world domination goal in mind. Um, and then I also like, uh, there's a movie called Galaxy Quest. I don't know if you've ever seen it. No. Uh, it's really funny. It's um, it's about these actors who are in like a Star Trek TV show and then real aliens come back and kidnap them several years later because they think that they are these actual like space heroes um but the mod one of the famous lines in galaxy quest is never give up never surrender which i think is a great motto for any writer to have or anybody in, in any kind of you know artistic field what are the three words that would best describe you i would say driven determined and dedicated Ooh. definitely gonna dominate the world <laughs> <laughs> what's the song that best describes you know that there's a song that would best describe me but whenever somebody asks me you know for a playlist for my characters I always uh, mention human by the pretenders and it's a this song about this woman who's been through a lot of trials and tribulations which you know I think describes a lot of books and I, I think it describes life so what is a unique talent or skill set that you have that not a lot of people know about oh gosh um I have a really good memory um like I'll talk to people at conferences and somebody will be like oh you know I live in Minnesota or whatever and you know I'll talk to that person again in two or three years online and I'm like are you still in Minnesota and they're like how do you remember that and I'm like I just like random facts about people stick in my head so that's one of my unique talents I guess that must come in handy sometimes it does uh yeah and then sometimes people are like why are you creeping on me like that <laughs> <laughs> I have had so much fun. What do we need to be on the lookout for? What's coming out and where do we stalk you? <laughs> uh, like I said before, I'm on Facebook, Instagram, and Twitter. And then you can also follow me on BookBub, Amazon, and Goodreads. Um, I have a website and a blog. So you can always look at those to get, you know, my latest book news and things like that. Let's see. Uh, Write Your Own Cake, the world building essay just came out earlier this week. And then uh, Tear Down the Throne, book two of my Gargoyle Queen epic fantasy series will be out on May 3rd. And then I will have an Elemental Assassin novella out in the Dirty Deeds 2 anthology that comes out in June. And then I am hoping to indie publish my sci-fi romance and then another book in my Section 47 spy series later this year. <laughs> <laughs> so much coming out my goodness how how quickly do you write a book how long does it usually take you to write a book uh it takes me several months so I would say from start to finish you know I can do I can do a rough draft of a book probably in about two months but I do spend a lot of time after that editing and um revising so but I I do write pretty quickly yeah that Obviously, with having all those books out this year, that's exciting. <laughs> Your readers are going to be so happy to hear this. They're like, yes. Well, I have had so much fun today. Thank you so much for coming on today. Thanks for having me. It has been a lot of fun. Absolutely. And who knows, maybe Watch Your Space will get you on next year and we'll, uh, we'll see if you've dominated the world yet. <laughs> Fingers crossed. <laughs> I believe in you. All right, well, I am going to love you and leave you, but I'll talk to you later, Jennifer. All right. Thank you so much. That's all right. Bye.